Hello, Akron fans! This is ShadowFury33, bringing you a exhibition match between Chris Haworth and Perlox. Chris is in the bottom left corner, choosing Ciso, and Perlox is in the top right corner, has not chosen his race yet. Though my guess is it'll probably be Grekum, but we'll see. And it is Grekum! So Perlox is going for Grekum, he is pausing, getting up his perfect start, or at least jumping back and actually getting Grekum at a more advantageous time. Now he's going for his perfect start, getting as far, moving his RPs where they need to go, and Chris is setting himself up as well. He hasn't paused to do so, but he, or if he, no, he hasn't, he hasn't queued anything up. But he is setting himself up. Interestingly, using only one Marine instead of two, which is kind of odd, using a second Marine to build factories in his expansion very quickly. I think it's a little too quick, but it is a good idea to take advantage of the natural expansion that's nearby. So, not a bad idea, just a little bit hasty. And Prolox is setting up his economy, he will be quite soon, as Faro has started regenerating. Now, pausing to get up his Octos, and will be able to set up his RPs shortly. Of course, moving Articus forward. Oh, moving Articus very forward, right next to the center of the map. Be able to see anything coming in. And Chris is getting his factory built up in the bottom corner of the map. Or bottom, not the bottom. The natural expansion, the top, the northwest natural expansion here. And he is also. No, he's not doing anything else. He's moving his special ops to scout, but that already happened. He is scouting the natural first, and then looks like he's probably end up moving into the base from there. The main base, I should say. And factory is being constructed, more RP is being constructed in the natural expansion. So not a whole lot going on in the main base. No importers either, which is interesting. I'm guessing he's going for mechs from the factory, although we'll see quite shortly. If he is, then that would explain a... Well, explain why he's not going for importers. If he's going for a quick mechs, then he'll be able to just... Not to worry about reserves at all. But he doesn't seem to be building any mechs right now. He is, though. No, he is definitely building a couple mechs. He's probably building Macrobat from there. He will need to get... He will need to, at some point get his reserves going. He'll only get importers, but not right now. And the triad... Wow, okay, so Perlox has really moved his duo forward. Really, he's... This is a kind of new strategy for Grekum, is to basically walk the duo along, building expansions around the map. Instead of trying to build a bunch of triads at every single base, just walk it along and just build RPs at every point of the map. Because the thing is, in Akron, RPs are pretty low cost and pretty low risk, so you can just build them wherever you want and also, almost use them as scouts in a way. He is over getting his Octo set up, so he's going to start actually building th things other than Octo. He's going to build a Seppi, probably get a Reef here in the middle of the map. Definitely building very forward. This is a little bit risky, but could pay off. Chris is getting more of his RPs going, get getting QP RPs now in his natural expansion. Interestingly, not building anything more from these mechs. While Perlox is going to be setting... Well, he's trying to set up a Reef in the center of the map. There we go. Now we can set it up. So he's definitely taking over the center of the map. This is a very ballsy move by Perlox. I don't know if this is going to work out, but he does have a lot of units building up right now. He, like I said, is kind of forward, so this main base could be easily attacked. The special ops, I'm a bit surprised that Chris's special ops didn't come around the back and actually attack those RPs, because that would just shut this whole idea down. And Chris is double-checking his expansion right now, going back. Looks like he's not really changing too much, but he does know that Grekum is here. And here we go, the special ops has arrived. So the Special Ops is going to be able to start shutting down these RPs. He really should go forward, though, to actually be able to shut down all of the RPs, because that will really slow down Perlox's production. If he can do that, while also building up stuff to actually attack the main base in the center of the map, although he's not aware of where that base is, he should be aware that there is nothing in the main base right now. And it looks like Chris is Special Ops... You know, Chris's Special Ops has been echoed out. He's not actually attacking with it, which is kind of strange, because it's a great opportunity to do so. So this is not something that happens very often. I'm not surprised, ultimately, it's just... Still, that's a great opportunity. It's just wide open. So, Perlox, no longer under attack. Main base is also quite... Well, not main base. His primary base on the center of the map is not as well defended as it could be, but it's well defended enough. Chris does not have enough of an army to actually harass it at this point, though he could. If he had a Mac card right now, he could get a couple Mar tanks and start using those to just tear down this base. There's only one Reef and no air units, so really, he could just start tearing this down. Bit surprised he hasn't done that yet. He does have only 44 QP. He does not have enough QP. Or he had more before, but he doesn't have enough QP right now to build a macro map. Getting an ATHC, though. And he will be able to use that to start building... Well, start attacking, harassing a bit, but... Really, a Martank would be great. It would be able to get it at this point, and it would be an awesome tool to have to fight off this base in the center of the map. Great way to punish it, but he doesn't have that right now. And, of course, the main base is completely unmolested. The Special Ops has not attacked the main base. Ultimately, it is going... Well, it seems to be just staying in its own base. Yes, staying in Chris's main base, not going towards Perlox's base. 
And now Perlux with the 414 mark is attacking directly. And here are, he have Chris's ATC has started attacking the Triad. The Triad can see it. The Faro is close enough. Or no, it wouldn't be able to see it because the Faro is not close enough. But the ATC is going to be able to deal damage to this Triad. However, not a huge amount. The Triad will be able to regenerate that damage before it actually becomes... Well, between its own regeneration and the Reef, it will be able to regenerate fast enough. The ATC just scouting around, not bothering to attack anything now. Does see a bunch of the Faro's and sees the Reefs. The Faro's coming, will be able to come up and start damaging the ATC. We'll be able to kill it pretty easily. The ATC is not attacking the Faro's, it's focusing on the Reef, and that won't be able to do anything right now. Perlox is about a minute down from here, and he is just going for a straight up attack. He is going half a dozen, well, half a dozen Faro's, half a dozen Sebi's, and going to be attacking in force. This is going to be more than enough to deal with what Chris has right now. Like I said, Chris really needs to jump back. He needs to go and get a macro cup about two minutes ago. Use that to build up Mar tanks, and then use those to just tear apart everything that's there. But right now, he has the QP for it. He has 80 QP at the four minute mark. He could build a macro fab, but he isn't. I'm not sure why he isn't. He is building a ton of mechs. Not a terrible idea in case of an air swap, but an air swap does not seem likely. I mean, it doesn't seem likely that an air swap will happen in such a way that Perlox will be able to capitalize on it before he is able to win at this point. Perlox dealing a ton of damage with these Faros and Seppies. Really doesn't even need to have air units right now. He can just tear apart everything that Chris has with these Faros and Seppies. And there isn't much Chris can do about it except build a macro fab right now. And that's the 343 mark, that is. Because in two minutes, he's going to be destroyed. But that's not something he's doing right now, which is a bit unfortunate. So it looks like Perlox is going to be able to take this game unless Chris has something up his sleeve that I don't see, but I don't see what that could possibly be. Of course, that would that's you know, kind of a tautology there, but you know what I mean. The base is under heavy siege, and there isn't much that Chris can do that I haven't already suggested that he do, does, but of course this is a replay, so nothing he actually hears will be something he'll use. That being said, if that did happen, that would be considered cheating. So I suppose it's all for the best. Anyway... In future games, Macrofabs are very useful for CISO. Extremely useful. Especially against Kraken. So it looks like Perlox, like I said, has a very solid position right now. Tearing apart the factory, and that is Chris's own... Oh, well, apart from the armory, Chris's only real army production structure. Perlox is jumping back about a minute or so just to redirect a bunch of new units to that attack. Just to enforce even further. This is... This is just... At least this is quick. A little embarrassing, but it is quick. It's a quick defeat. And there is another game between the two of them that we'll be casting afterwards. And that, we'll see what Chris has learned after this, because Chris has probably learned to use macrofabs, or at least to build more units, and don't don't expect that Grecum will just sit back and do nothing. And jump back, we jumped back about two minutes just now, going ahead again about a minute. So we see that, like I said, Perlox, oh, interesting, Perlox is canceling the attack. Oh, I see, Perlox is getting Faropod. He is cancelling the attack, though. I think he's actually going easy on Chris. Realizing that he's basically destroying Chris at this point. He doesn't want to give Chris too hard of a time, since Chris is a newer player. So looks like he's going easy on him. He's holding back the Faros and Seppies. Though they are still attacking, actually. Chris, Chris and Max move forward, and might have spelled his own doom, because Chrono Abner... Sorry. Because Perlox is not able to go back and deal with this. Chrono Abner has nothing to do with this game. I don't know why I even thought of his name. I think I was thinking of the EXP mod, which this is not using. So there's no point even worrying about that. Anyway, Perlox is going to be now continuing to attack. He's going to be able to destroy everything here. Once again, like we already saw, he's able to destroy everything here. He just held back that one time, but it looks like really there's no holding back at this point. He's going for the kill, and there's nothing he can do about it because it's fallen off in playable past. He is actually also chronoporting a Faropod back, which will be able to damage Chris even more than it already has. I'm not sure Chris realizes this yet. Perlox is definitely not going back to check it out, but Chris might be able to check it out at some point. He's probably realizing there's damage, more damage coming in, more damage he hasn't seen. But he doesn't seem to be going back to check it out yet. You can see a lot of blue on the timeline. The red time wave is coming over, and Perlox actually is checking out his far pod attack. And it is... Well, it's... Yeah, it's right here. The only damage. And he's just jumped forward ahead of it. And the far pod... Actually, it's on the red time wave, so... We don't see it yet because we are ahead of the red time wave right now, but once the red time wave comes, we will see it. And there isn't much that Chris can do at this point. Chris has lost, it's just a matter of him GGing, and yeah, from his point of view, he does see that there is a... Actually, where did the Farpod go? Oh, huh, it's bizarre. The Farpod might have been destroyed, but rather odd. No, the Farpod chronoporting is consistent, so I'm not sure exactly where the Farpod went, but it does look like the Farpod 
did get destroyed or leave at some point, because I do not see a fire pot around here. No, there is no fire pot that I see around here. The natural, however, has been completely destroyed, so it doesn't matter. The natural is gone. It Even if the fire pod got killed at some point, it makes no difference. And now the Seppies and Faros are approaching the main base and will be able to destroy that shortly. So Chris, really, at this point, hasn't got anything he can do. Perlox's building more units, and yeah, he has GG'd. He has surrendered, so that is going to be Perlox's game. Well done to Perlox. So nice little base class rush there. This is actually something that Vikran has been doing a fair bit too. And I kind of came up with it, but he also does Chronoport on top of this. Perlox did not do the Chronoport on the base class rush. He just, just did the base class rush. Which is still a powerful strategy, as you can see, if the opponent isn't expecting it. But it is a bit of a cheese strategy, because it doesn't involve going middle of the map. And like I said, Martanks would have been able to tear this apart quite quickly. Would have required air units sooner. And then there were mechs already to take care of any air units. So yeah, it was interesting. And it looks like, yeah, Perlux is going to win. So, Chris notice, noting that he doesn't have reserves to build anything with, and no he does not, because his importer was destroyed, and will be surrendering any minute, or any second now, I'm sure. Now, the armory's been destroyed. Perlux continuing to just rampage through everything that Chris has, and Chris has been officially defeated at this point in time at 831, which is about four seconds ago. And, yep, now, so they're going for a rematch. Like I said, we'll be casting this sprite after, and surrender. So, that was the first match. So, hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.